Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good evening. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. This is Mount Bethel Christian Bible Study, Getting Real with God, and I'm glad to be here. Praise the Lord. Uh, this is an awesome show. I just love to be able to come on once a week and just talk about what God's doing in my life and what I see Him doing, you know, in other people's lives. And you know, mainly, um, you know, just try to focus on what just seek God at all times, you know, for for His will, for what He wants me to do. And uh, so this show kind of guarantees that I'll I'll get into Word at least once a week. <laughs> I used to be in the Word a lot, and but I'm not a, I'm not a minister, I'm not a pastor, or anything like that. I'm just a private citizen doing you know, paying to do my shows here. But I just I'm a student of the Word of God, and uh, you know, just a follower of the Lord Jesus. And uh, I gave my life to the Lord May twenty second, two thousand seven. Praise God, saved my life, uh, redeemed me, and uh, you know, I'm not looking back as far as 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 to my old life before I was born again. So, you know, I love to do the show. And mainly, you know, hopefully it will help someone out there who has, you know, been dealt with so much pain in their life and just been through so much. There's been, you know, all of us have suffered something at some time that will sometimes make us question, you know, was God there, you know? Is he really there? You know, who is God? Like, you know, some people say she, is she really there? Same God. We're all worshiping the same God. Um, the, the the creator, you know, the the father, the creator, the mother, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call him. I'm comfortable calling him he, but that's you know that's just me. I was born into a a Western, you know, Western uh, United States Christian a home that would you know, it was kind of Christian, I guess. So it's easy for me to say he, but you know, she, whatever you want to call him, God, God, our God, creator, our maker. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah, and His precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, so many times people can be hurting and, and not not feel that God was ever with them or that God was ever there or that God is even a part of their life. That's how I felt for so many years, even though I knew that God was, I knew who God was. You know, I knew that God existed. But I just felt that he had abandoned me, you know, and left me in this abusive home. And I, anybody who listens to my shows knows all about that. But, um, you know, I just felt like, why? how could he leave people to suffer? How could, you know, I didn't understand because I, I, did, I obviously my mind was too young to to grasp the whole picture of of you know e- the evil in, in men's hearts and the evil that men will do as they serve Satan and they serve the enemy they serve the disease instead of serving God and so you know it was hard for me to get my mind wrapped around that and it took me until I was born again when I met the Lord May second two thousand seven and started to study His Word and realized that God was with me the whole time and. You know, now I, it's more evident in my life now, more now than it ever has been, um, because I seek God all the time and I'm seeking Him continually, and He's there. You know, and He talks to me and I talk to Him and we have a a relationship. You know, it's just it's awesome and beautiful, and um, I spend a lot of time in the Spirit. I don't have a lot of time, and my my time, my time is pretty well taken up, uh, but you know, just between my personal life as well as advocating to stop child abuse and you know, working with dream catchers for abused children and. You know, I've got a life too. You know, I've got a sweetheart, and he's 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 in need of of attention and and help right now. And but in my spare time, I do spend a lot of time in the spirit, just communing with the Lord. And um, this week, I mean, especially this last few weeks, I'm, this show, I'm actually going to put a little warning, a discretionary warning on this show. So anybody who's listening right now, you know, if, if you're under the age of 18, I would ask that you turn the show off and or have an adult listen to the show with you who can help you make a decision whether you should be listening. Anybody else, just know that I'm talking about abuse, and abuse is a sensitive subject, and uh, it can cause people to, you know, to uh, be uncomfortable. So, you know, you want to make sure that, you, that you're okay and, and to listen to this sort of thing, right, to any of my shows, right? But this last few weeks has been pretty hard on me as I've been searching. Actually, this has been going on for a long time. <clears throat> Excuse me, for a long time, many, many, many years. I've been um, always having these visions of being sexually abused. I knew that I was sexually abused. The issue was is I stuffed it. I stuffed it so far down that I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to have to pick it up and, and remember these these painful thoughts. And I didn't want to have to remember what happened to me. But all the physical evidence was there. And I talked about it on a show, actually, um, Friday night show, as well as Friday morning show. Uh, so his, kind of my two Friday shows were devoted to the abuse that I suffered um, at the hands of my brother, sexual abuse, rape, and sodomy. So, um, 
you know, I, I stepped all that so far down that I almost, I could only catch glimpses of it in my memories. And so I didn't put it, I didn't want to write about it in and, and, and talk about it too much in A Life of Death and Redemption, my book that I put out, because I didn't have a clear cognitive, you know, clear cognitive uh, view in my mind of what had happened because I had stuffed it for so long. But that was bothering me, and I was praying to the Lord, and I was asking the Lord, I said, the, the Father, I said, Father, I need, I, I need to see this. I need to see, I need to see it so I can move past it. I need to see it so that I can forgive it, so that I can forgive my brother, you know, so that so that I can truly um, be at peace with this, you know. And so yeah, I kept praying that, and praying that, and praying that, you know. And I've been, but I, I, I always the answer I get from the Father is that that He will show me, you know, all things will be revealed in His time. And when it's when it's the right time, and I believe this because in the Bible everything is, you know, the whole plan of God. It all has to come in the right, proper sequence. Everything is 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 as exactly as as it should be, and that is to to bring us toward the the perfection. Praise God, and that's the redemption. But uh, you know, I I was praying and praying, and I I was just like, Lord, you know, I you know, I'd like to see this. I'd like to actually see the whole thing. I need to be able to see it so I can move past it. So I can first of all accept what happened to me, you know, and 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 then go there, right, in order to heal. So just this last few weeks, I've been able to see it, and um, I was able to actually write it down. And I was feeling kind of like, oh my God, you know, that never should ever happen to me. You know what I mean? That's so incredibly painful for a child to have to deal with that. And we know the children are sexually abused all the time. And if you look at the stats, I mean, they are what they are. If you listen to my other shows, I'm not going to go into that on this show. But the stats are, you know, it's what it is. It's the truth. It's fact. It's reality. And um, but lots of people like to pretend it doesn't happen. And if they want to live in their safe world, that's, that's all right. But there's, it's not a safe world. <laughs> it's obvious that Satan is running around here, you know, tra- devour, seeking and devouring who he may. And who he will, and who will serve him. And who, who, will, who will do as, you know, his will instead of God's will. Right, evil, evil intent of the heart. Right, and so you know that's why this stuff's going on. Obviously, anybody who reads the Bible knows this. So it, it, the issue is, is, I really wanted to see this, and the last couple of weeks I was able to see it. And of course, it's discouraging. Of course, of course, it, it was it was hurtful to see it. You know, and I remembered the whole thing the, the, when I was eight years old, being uh, raped and, and sodomized by my by, by my brother, <laughs> uh, who I loved dearly. And um, he didn't love me, but I loved him, and that's the sad fact. As I go, as I went back, and I and I, I retraced my childhood as far back as I could remember, of um, especially my cognitive memories of being around five, six, seven, eight, you know, nine, and and then um, that's about all I had any contact with him because he left the country right after he. Well, I, I don't know. I think it would be about six months after he sexually abused me, he left the country, and so. Uh, you know, I didn't have much contact with him after that, and they committed suicide. But um, he talked to me on the phone one time when he was committing suicide. He tried many times to commit suicide, and one time I was 13, so he would have been uh, he was he was um, 13 years older than me, so he would have been 26 years old. So when I was eight, he was 21 when he raped and sodomized me. So there you go. He was a lot bigger, a lot more powerful. He was a man. He was a grown man, and he raped me. And so. You know, he, he talked to me on the phone when he was committing suicide when I was 13. And he, he was saved because he was talking to me on the phone. My mother knew where he was at and went and across the street to the neighbors and got the, the police and, and contacted my brother, and they actually saved him. <laughs> but the thing is, is he confessed what he had done to me on the phone. And I knew it. I knew it. I I was so, uh, you know, at the age of 13, I mean, I had I hated my body. I hated my... I hated my life. I was already I was already being abused by my parents from the day I was born, in every way except for sexually. My brother was the only one who sexually abused me. Well, my dad a little bit, but mainly was ogling and and that type of stuff, sexual touching and stuff. But not 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 rape and sodomy. That was my brother, and I and I knew it. But in my heart, I wanted to believe it was my dad. But when he confessed it to me, I I, I knew it in my heart that it was him all along, and so I kind of. You know, I, I stuffed that. I, did, I didn't want to hate him, you know, but part of me did. But part of me also loved him and felt sorry for him because he was treated so badly as a child. 
we all grew up in the same home. And then I thought, you know, oh my God, you know, like, like, uh, what do you do with that? You know, <laughs> well, in order to survive in an abusive home, you, sometimes you have to stuff stuff. You know what I mean? And I was still being abused by my parents, so I, I mean, I still had to stuff stuff way down. And so I stuffed it and stuffed it. Then I, when I was 21, I went to the gy- gynecologist to get on the pill uh, because I wanted to have intimate relations with the guy that I loved with all my heart. And, you know, it would have been the first time for me in my mind that I, I, in my mind, I was a virgin, even though I knew I wasn't. But I wanted to be a virgin. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be a virgin. I wanted, I, I didn't want to be this, 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 child who was raped at eight years old, you know, my virginity stolen at eight years old. I mean, I wanted to be a virgin so because I wouldn't have anything to do with guys until I met this guy at the age of 21. I wouldn't even let a guy touch me. I mean, if a guy touched me, it was like, you know, a serious issue. Like, I, I would not have anything to do with anything, with even my own sexuality or anything else, you know. I was just so shut down and my parents' dysfunctional sexual abuse and all this stuff. I mean, I, I talk about it on my other shows. But the thing is, is you know, I wanted to be a virgin. And I was the gynecologist. They were like, this, this woman was like, you're no virgin, honey. <laughs> you know, we see sexual abuse here. I was like, no, no, I'm a virgin. She was like, no, no, you're not a virgin, honey. You know, um, <laughs> were you abused sexually as a child? I was just like, oh, my God. You know, what am I supposed to say? I had been stuffing this for so long. I had been, I had been stuffing it for... Uh, 8 to 21, I had been stuffing it for, what's that, 13 years. And um, I didn't want to deal with it. I just I just told her, I said, well, whatever, but I'm a virgin. So anyway, it didn't matter. She put me on the pill. And back in those days, they didn't have mandatory reporting. They might have reported it in their own, of course they reported it in their own charts, but they didn't have, they did, I didn't have to go to the police or anything and fill out a report. Nowadays, that's the case. But, uh, you know, very frustrating. Then, then that year, my brother committed suicide. And I th- oh, so this is what the Lord, I, I've been able to see that my relationship with my brother was good. He, he didn't love me. I, would, I just loved him. <laughs> you know, he was not good to me when I was little. He was not one of my brothers that was good to me. So, you know, he didn't mind using me for his sex objects, for his sex toy, right? He didn't mind hurting me. He didn't love me. He didn't have any feelings for me. I was just this little person that he could use to to fulfill his sexual gratification. And he didn't care if he hurt me. You know, he didn't care, right? And so I was talking about it with the Lord today. And I was like, Lord, if I'm wrong in any of my memories or any of my, you know, what I remember and recall, if I'm wrong and I'm, and I'm blinded or, or, or I'm, I'm misunderstanding something, you've got to let me know. And I was right in the spirit there with the Lord. And the Lord said to me, he says, daughter, your memories are not false. They are truth. And I have allowed you to see them because you can handle it now. I told you that all would be revealed and all will be restored. And I'm like, praise God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You know? Um, and I, so I prayed. With, I just prayed, you know? And and I just felt the, 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 the Father, Father God just picked me up you know, in his arms, in his loving arms, with that light, that gold, pure white gold light. And he just held me. And he said, I didn't want to see you in pain. I did not want to see you suffer. You know, you will, what your brother chose to do was out of the evil intent of his heart. And I could not stop it. And he said, I don't want to see any of my children suffer. Basically, is that, that's what he was saying. And I was just like, oh, so it's such a beautiful experience. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And he he put a crown upon my head, and he said, "This crown is not heavy, and it stays with you. It does not come off." And he's done this a few times because I keep taking it off. Um, but each time I I go and I really seek the Lord, he puts the crown back on, and I end up taking it back off because I'm not worthy, you know. But he loves me. He loves you, right? So. That's the truth of it right there, you know. And I, you know, I asked him, I said, well, will you let me see if there was anything else? Because I'd like to see it all, if if I can. I'd like to see it all because I need to be able to move past this, you know. And he said, daughter, you will see things, and you already have, and you know it. And you will see more of what happened to you and the abuse that you suffered at the hands of your brother 
He says, you will see it as it comes to you, you know. And, and he said, he said, but you do not worry because all will be restored, you know. And I'm just like, thank you, Father. I mean, that's beautiful. Now, that's beautiful. That's Even though the situation is really harsh, right? Nobody wants to have to sit back and think about what they were being put through as an eight-year-old being raped and sodomized, you know. It's very painful to think about. It's painful to think about the, the effects that it had on psyche, on my mind, on my spirit, on my soul. Just that one incident, you know, just that one 15-minute incident. So, you know, I mean, I wrote about it um, on Facebook. I actually posted a, a thing basically for my advocacy work. And I, and I said, you know, 15 minutes, take 15 minutes and think about what a child's going through in a 15-minute span of either being abused physically, verbally, emotionally, psychologically, sexually, in any way, right? Neglected. It's absolutely horrific. And, uh, you know, I had some great comments, and, and I, I had one comment that was kind of put me off last night and sent me back down to the pits of hell. You know, my inner child was the, the, the little girl who's still inside me, the, the eight-year-old, who's still, still so sensitive, you know. And she thought that I was going to put the gag back on her because I was I was bound and gagged by my brother so he could do what he wanted to do to me without me fighting him because I had bitten him a couple of nights before. And so, you know, she thought I was going to put the gag back on her and, and, and stop speaking about what happened, you know. And I, and I told her, I said, no, that gag will never go back on, never. It will not be ever bound again. So that's me talking to myself, saying no one will ever, ever hurt me again like that. You know what I mean? Like, that's me reassuring myself, you know, that, that my brother can't hurt me anymore. You know, my parents can't hurt me anymore. But this is the stuff that people go through, you know. And we have to be able to make peace. We have to be able to, to in whatever way we can, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm doing all mine, I would say self-help, but they call it self-help, but it's not really self-help because I have so many beautiful friends in my life that have been helping me through this, you know. Um, my good friend Gypsy Witch is helping me with visualizations and just being for me, being there for me every day and uh, every night, you know, all the way across the world from Australia. And I've got people, I've got Sandra Potter and Donna Shear who support me in every way, Elizabeth Brawley and so many others. Princess Kaylin, I mean, I could spend a whole show just talking about all the beautiful people in my life who are helping me get through this, you know. And it's it's awesome because they're all gifts from God. God has put all these people in my life. He said all things would be restored, right? And he was he was talking the truth. God is truth, and God, what he said is truth. It's I, I love the Lord with all my heart. So I'm so you know extremely thankful to be able to be here tonight to talk to you. You know to tell you just reach out to him. You know you just reach out to him in your darkest hour. Just when you think he's not there, that's when you reach out to him because he is there, right? So I want to read Psalm 116. The psalm is so beautiful. This is uh, it's just sort of fitting to what I'm going through and what I have been, what, I, what me and, and so many abused people and people all over the world, whether they're abused or not, just people suffering everywhere, right? Because of the issues of the evil, of, of the intent of the heart that people would follow Satan and not God that they would serve evil instead of love and truth and light and compassion and mercy. Right? Praise the Lord. Psalm 116, I'm reading out of the King James. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, have I spoken? I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I rend unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. 
precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant, I am thy servant, and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. That's beautiful. You know, this is just it. So many people, you know, everybody's suffered something. We've all been there. And, you know, we just, you know, the, the sorrows of death and the, and the pains of, of of grief, you know, compass us about sometimes, you know. And it's truly, you know, just seeking his love, his mercy, his compassion, and through those who would serve him, you know. It's so important to reach out to people, you know, to, to people that are in your life for a reason and to allow them to help you through, you know. And to, you know, to allow them to just be there with you and be part of your life and not shut them out. Because God has has used so many people to do so many wonderful things. Um, you know, it's not that he uses people. He, it's just that people choose to be his hands and feet here on the earth, you know. And his voice, praise God. So, you know, if you're hurting and you're suffering and you're thinking, you know, how am I ever going to get out of this pain? You know, how am I ever going to heal? How am I ever going to... You know, how am I ever going to do this? You know, we can't do it on our own, but we do. We do. We do have to do it. It is us that actually has to make that decision, and it's us that has to make the decision to replace the hatred with love. You know, and we have to make that decision to replace the 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 anger, you know, with compassion. You know, and and the 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 all that bad evil stuff in our hearts. We need to replace that with God's mercy. You know, because He is mercy. And he is truth, and he is light and goodness and, and, and everything that is good. And so that's what had to happen to me. I mean, four years ago, when I was born again, May twenty second, 2007, like, I'll never forget that day. But, I mean, my heart was so full of of anger, you know, and rage and hatred for my parents, for not, not for them, not for not for their soul, not, not for them, who they, not for them, for what they did. I, I hated what they did. I... I I couldn't even come to grips with it and, and what my brother did to me, you know, I was just, you know, I was like, oh my God, you know, like, like these people, look what these people did to me, you know, I was just screaming and raging and, um, you know, when I went at the Lord, May 22nd, 2007, that all changed because God, I, I let God start to work on my heart. I just allowed the Holy Spirit to come in. I said, Holy Spirit, come in and cleanse my heart. I want to have the heart of God. I want to have the mind of God. I want to have the mind, you know, and I want to be as as, as much like my Father as I possibly can, which be which, which, to be love, to be mercy, to be compassion, to be goodness and kindness, you know. And so to all, you know, I mean, to my brother, like, you know, do I want to see his soul rot in hell? No. <laughs> I prayed the prayer today to ask that the Father would would not hold that against his, his to, to charge him with that to not hold that against him because he was so my brother was so abused himself in every way he was so twisted and so you know lost really he killed himself right and he had tried many times like that's what I like to remind people people say oh how do you really you know was it an accident or did he just you know messing around and killed himself. I mean, he had tried to kill himself many times. He was a miserable person. That's why he raped and sodomized me and continued to sexually use me until he left the country. <laughs> right? He was not a happy person. He was a, he was terribly depressed. He was manic depressive and he was very ill and he was psychologically ill. <sighs> you know, and it's like, do I do I want to see him go to hell? No, I don't. It hurts my heart to think of it. But yet, I don't you know, right now, because I'm just just seeing what he did to me. You know, I, I I can't ever condone abuse, right? That's why I speak out against it. You know, I I have all my other shows that people are more than welcome to tune into. You got to have a pretty strong stomach if you're going to listen to my stuff. That's for sure, because I'm just telling it like it is. But you know, it's it's like you know, I I can't condone what my brother did to me. No, I never will. I can't condone abuse. I can't condone rape rape sodomy of a child. You know, he stole my flower, you know what I mean? He stole my he stole my light, he stole my anything that was ever left of me that was that was innocent, which wasn't much because I grew up in hell. Um, 
that little part of me that was still innocent, that that little tiny piece, he, he took it, you know. And from then on, I was dead. I mean, I realized by the time I was 10 that I was dead. You know, but God didn't see it that way. God, God didn't see it that way, you know. So now I'm alive in Him, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God, you know. So it's a it's an amazing thing, you know, the love of God that that spreads spreads abroad in our hearts. And you know, I would just say for you know for anybody out there who's suffering and just thinking, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to cope. I don't know how I'm going to get through the night. You know, I mean, that's how I was when I was eight years old laying on that bed. I tell you that. After being raped and sodomized, I was thinking, I don't know how I'm going to get through this night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die, you know, because I was dead. But God didn't see it that way, you know. So he, he, he saw me live, and he saw me live to be victorious, you know. And that's, in there, there is sad times. In there, there is grief. In there, there is sorrow. Just like King David was always talking about that. You know, my sorrow encompasses me. But in that, he knew that God was with him all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he loved God. <clears throat> Excuse me. He loved God. He loved God with all of his heart. You know, and that's me. I love God with every part of my being. Because he saved me saved me from a life of hell, you know, my own hell that I was going to allow myself to stay in if had he not come and and entered into my heart and and had I not died on that cross with the Lord Jesus, praise God. So that's my redemption and, um, you know, it's an amazing thing. So I would say just reach out to him. You know, I used to to be completely (laughs) non-Christian and I was completely against reading the Bible and I didn't want anybody praying for me or touching me or hugging me or showing me any kind of love because it, it it reminded me of what I missed out on as a child. You know, for people to care about me, it just hurt me that people would later on who didn't know the situation would care about me because it reminded me of, the, of what I needed when I was little and I didn't get. And so now I embrace it. I embrace it. I welcome it, you know. And that's the true gift from God, is love in our hearts and love that abounds to other people that we can help, that we can that we can try to, to, to be there for, you know? Like like we're all just human and we can all just only do what we can do. But I would say to you know, for those who are suffering, you know, to reach out, you know, to, to people who who are putting their hands out to you, you know. And you go ahead and let them help you and you know, and and, and allow this love to come in your heart and allow this you know this 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 healing to come into your heart. That's what I did four years ago because I was going to kill myself. You know, and I mean I was I was headed for it. I was always going to kill myself. You know, and I mean four years ago I made a I didn't make a deal with God. I like to say I made a deal with God, but God doesn't make deals. Um, I just promised God that I said no no more will I ever think of that again. My pa- my parents were suicidal. My family was suicidal, and two of my siblings committed suicide and my dad tried to kill us and he was suicidal so you know I just grew up in that right and so I was going to kill myself and and I, I four four years ago I made a promise to God and to myself it was a pa- it was a commitment it was a it was a um it was a pact you know like a like a covenant and I said I will never ever say that again I will never think that again I will live and not die praise God hallelujah thank you lord <clears throat> so thanks everybody for being here you know, it's my true heart coming out here tonight, and um, I love you guys. I'll be praying for you and uh, keeping you all in my heart and keeping you in my prayers. And tomorrow's another day. You know, we'll just give it up to the Lord. You know, have a great night, everybody. God bless you all. <laughs>